So everybody, thank you so much for joining us today, uh, bringing you from the heart of New York. Uh, we have E2M Live's new product, uh, E2M On Air, and we're going to talk about virtual conferencing in, in the age of uh, Corona and how we're battling that. And uh, even beyond that, we're just not just virtual conferencing, but like full scale event engagement, uh, even if people are virtual. So I have joining with me today, Sid. Uh, Sid is the CEO of Web Spiders and E2M. Uh, he's the he's the brainchild behind most of our product innovation at Web Spiders. So he runs the labs at E2M. And uh, Sid is going to give us some insights on, you know, how and what the thought process was behind bringing on air and, uh, you know, how E2M as a, as a product as a company, we're working with our partners and event planners so that, you know, we can keep their events and their businesses running seamlessly. So hi, Sid, welcome. How are you? Yeah, good, 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 Varun. So, so one thing that I see, you know, with all the, all the press around, uh, around the industries that are impacted, I think uh, you definitely see retail and hospitality, uh, but, you know, events per se have not been mentioned a lot, but, but the fact is that, you know, the events industry is as large as the advertising industry. It's about 700 billion, just the corporate. And if you take all the other kinds of events, excluding corp business events, we're talking about a trillion dollar industry. And, um, you know, like like retail, this is, and like hospitality, this is something that thrived on being live. Um, right. And we've been working across, uh, so, you know, large enterprises uh, for so many years. So, so let me ask you a question. So, I mean, you know, everybody is just coming to terms with this a lot. A lot of this happened very suddenly, right? I mean, for a lot of countries like the U.S. and uh, parts of Europe. So, what is? How have you guys seen the trend with your with your customers and partners? Can you give me give us an idea, like what's happening and how how you're seeing the event industry get impacted with it? Well, so uh, it's it's definitely we've seen. I mean, we've been I mean, we've been around as as you know in this uh, in the event app business for more than seven years, and of course, right. all right now, all events at least for the next three or four months have been have been postponed or cancelled. Right. However, you know what we are seeing is that the enterprise events, especially where you're talking about customer engagement or you're talking about employee sales enablement. Right. What we are seeing is that uh, that was the, you know, that the core means of activating those groups or motivating those groups or engaging with those groups was via events. Right. So I think what we are seeing with all our customers is that they now they cannot stop. You know, the the you know, uh, for example, a festival or uh, a music festival or a or a discretionary trade show might be postponed or canceled. Or an Olympics, or an Olympics might be postponed. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but but what what the large companies who who actually are our customer base, uh, you know, the Fortune 500, medium to large scale companies, they just cannot. I mean, that was the main value proposition. So they they're right. definitely wanting to pivot. And coincidentally, we were already working on on the on the virtual piece for a while. It's just that right. we we expedited the rollout based on the recent uh, recent events. Absolutely. I mean, I, I personally am working, as you're aware, with uh, you know, uh, some large financial groups and consulting firms who had like tons of events. I mean, like that's the that's the thing that I mean, a lot of one of the things that has hit the event industry very hard is that this is the prime event season. Right. Starting spring mm -hmm. is mm -hmm. where all these big, you know, a lot of companies mm -hmm. have their new financial year starting from April one. So they want to do their mm -hmm. sales kickoffs and set up these goals and there they mm. have to do it. i mean there are trainings that need to happen with new employees that have mm. joined or new features mm. or products that these companies have developed and they cannot mm. just not do that so that is what i am seeing too sid i mean like with uh, some of my technology clients consulting clients that they have these next three months where where they had bulk of their events and uh, mm. you know they, they've all come around and they've all asked that how do we go about it and one of the things Sid, is uh, what I would really like to understand from you is that there are a lot of, you know, web conferencing and webinar tools available out there. So yeah. as, as, as an event planner, 
Mm. How do they evaluate between a web conferencing tool or an, a conference specific an event, like something like E2M on air? How mm. do you, how mm. do you say, how does an event planner say that, Hey, I'm going to not use whatever enterprise conferencing, web conferencing system we have, and I'm going to use something which is more so. So can you give us some ideas and, and thoughts on that? Yeah, yeah. No, that's that's a, that's a good question. I think that the, the core core difference here, Varun, is that is is the context. So, as an example, if you if you if you just had one uh, session, or if you just had one meeting, then something like Zoom or or Zoho or you know the tons of others, they they, they are yeah. good enough. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Now, events as a structure, whether it's a sales enablement event or a customer event or any kind of uh, business B2B event, as a structure, usually it's at least half a day or or the full day. Most of it actually goes to two or three days. Right. Now, th there's an element of discovery during an event. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, a, there's an element of being able to, uh, you know, wander around during an event. There's an element right. of meeting new people during an event. There's an element of switching sessions. So you're yeah. in one session, uh, you know, even in a private employee-only event, we, what we see is that you have multiple sessions, and based on your, based on which group you are, you might be going to one session, and then you have Correct. a personal agenda. Yeah. Now, now that would equate to having, you know, hundred or Zoom groups or something like that. So we, what we did was we took the E2M app, which is already used by, you know, mm -hmm. uh, dozens of Fortune 500 companies, and we had the video piece. Uh, which essentially connected to that core event context. So, as an example, let's take a panel, right? You, yep. you know, a panel, a panel discussion as an example, right? It's, it's. If you, if you were to have the same panel online, then what would happen is it would be a roundtable where, like, with the picture that you're seeing is that you know you're having a discussion and other people join in as a spectator. They just, they just Absolutely. log in, they join the room. Now, if they don't like that room. They could go to another room where, yeah. where another panel is going on, or they might go to the keynote room where where the main you know during the keynote hour. At the same time, you know the 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 element of engagement between the attendees because you learn you you meet attendees. So you know we have the traditional like the social wall that helps people post what they're doing. So our clients are actually using this not only for one session but across the day. Uh, mm -hmm. Sometimes in broadcast and sometimes in, in in from a networking and gamification point of view. So I like I like how you put that uh, initially when you said you know there's an element of discovery at events like whether you're discovering sessions or people or exhibitors and I I, I completely agree with that and to put it in a nutshell from the way you explain it, it comes across like the app kind of becomes like a virtual venue now right like that's where the event it's like a full scale venue where you have rooms, you have exhibitor meetups and, you know, so you're not asking people to, Hey, find a zoom link. And, you know, if I want to go that, you know, they can just wander around like they would have within a venue. They can just wander around within the app and go from room to room, panel to panel, meet exhibitors, talk to people. Right. Is, is yeah. that, 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 does that make sense? Yeah, exactly. And even, even things like, uh, you know, the, 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 the typical concept of raise your hand and pass around the mic and I want to ask a question. Yeah. You know, that that that's you know how flawed that particular process is. Yeah. There is you know you the QA here with the ability to upvote, for example, is is a great way to uh, you know get things done. Yep. Uh, and the fact yep. that automatically you record all of these as a as a potential to uh, you know be in your archive as a means of education for other groups, even after the event. Yeah. So, yeah. So we're seeing, definitely we're seeing synergy. And in these times, it comes across as, as the, as the perfect tool. So I guess, I guess from what, what we're showing here, guys, is the fact that your events can still hold the same structure that they would have just because they're going virtual doesn't mean that you lose that value for your attendees, whether it's for your sponsors or whether it's for your attendees, you can still virtually give them access to pretty much everything that they would have if they were physically at the event. And E2M as 
as a product, as a company, is bringing that virtual piece to that in-person piece. It's bringing them together using the app and giving you as event planners the ability to keep moving, to keep providing the same value to your you know, attendees, to your planners. So, so we're going to talk a little more about, you know, like all the additional features that E2M brings around on top of and how they they come into effect in virtual meetings. And Sid did touch base upon, you know, some of them, which is similar things like you would have done if people were coming to your event. I mean, either they can personalize and build their own agenda and have it in one place, or as an attendee, you can serve them. As a planner, you can serve their personalized agenda. We have tons of clients who always serve personalized agenda. The attendees only see the sessions that they're supposed to attend. You know, uh, similarly, you, they can still do one-to-one -one messaging with each other. They can uh, they can discover other attendees from the attendee list who all are at the session or at the event, not just at the session. So that's another difference with a Zoom call or something like that. You will only be able to see people who are in that session. But with a full event container, an app, you're able to see everybody who's at the event, whether they're virtually at the event, whether they're virtually at the event or in a different session, but you'll be able to see and you'll still be able to network. You'll still be, you can even create sponsors can have their, instead of having a physical booth space, they will have a video streaming booth space. So I can visit a sponsor's listing on the app and I can uh, connect with them with your video conference directly. So, so the big difference that you get with E2M providing this virtual integration is the fact that everything is seamless. You don't have to find links to connect to a session. You don't have to know what the meeting code was. Uh, you just go to that section of the app and I'll, I'll kind of sit, I think it might make sense for me to just pull up the actual app and maybe show it from there. Yeah, yeah. I think uh, just to add on to that, you know, there was an interesting use case about the happy hour. But I think let's not forget you know, when we met face to face, the the five o'clock or six o'clock, the, the, yep. the drinks was always a popular session, right? Uh, Absolutely, as we call it, the nineteenth hole, right? So, so the virtual happy hour is also you know some something that people people are really enjoying. Uh, you know, they're, they're having a drink in their hand, and it's not that they're meeting the people they know; they're meeting people within the event for the first time. Many of them just getting introduced. And with, with video, they're discovering new people while they're having a drink. So that's I know that's not the core core use case, but surprisingly, that's that's becoming popular. So so this is this is an example of a standard event app, guys, with all the event specific features, schedule, and everything. And now you will see how seamless it is. If I go within a session, you will see the join broadcast button right here. And each session has its own stream and it launches its own stream. Obviously, these streams are not live right now. But the fact is that I can go from one session to the other, one session to the other, and just see whichever session I feel like I'm more interested in. And I can just keep joining those streams. So I don't have to go find a different link. I don't have to do any of that. Similarly, the panels are available directly over here as roundtables. If I click on a roundtable, I can see all the different roundtables. Now, these roundtables are just like panel discussions. Now, these can be private roundtables, which I have only spectate feature available, where I can only go and spectate. Or I could just go and see, OK, who's on this table right now? And I could just join the empty seat over there. And it will automatically launch a video conference automatically. So I don't have to find the link for that. Everything is built in. Everything is seamless. And at the same time, I have access to the social features. I have access to all the documents and presentations, uh, whatever is session recordings, they're all available via the app. So all, all of that comes together in one place. And I have access to this pre-event, during event. And like Sid said, the happy hour can take place. So one of the round tables can just be for us to do a happy hour and I could be having a beer sitting on my table and somebody can join that table. So, you know, it, it just makes makes it so much easier for attendees to discover other attendees, to discover event-specific content, to also, you know, uh, be able to switch and still enjoy the event like they would have in an actual real-time event. And also, so, so Varun, just to add, add from a from a technology point of view, you know, these the the backend for uh, for the video 
is uh, you know out of the box for each customer they come ready with provision for up to a million simultaneous users for the broadcast so so you you're good you're good for a million users and even that can be ramped up in case you're going for a public sort of an audience uh, that can be ramped up but by default we provision uh, your instance for up to a million users on the broadcast so uh, yeah and then and then that's that. a good point that you bring in said because i mean that also one of the features that i definitely wanted to talk about is the session engagement i mean one of the things that you know event planners struggle with uh with virtual events and i've heard this a lot with a lot of my my customers who are like you know we're doing this event we're we're doing this virtually but we have no ideas you know whether people will be you know listening paying attention or not and that's why you know i think some of these engagement features like live polling and live surveys and like the fact that you just mentioned that you know it's scalable up to million users similarly we have you know polls that i know that these are scalable up to thousands and millions of users said if i'm correct right and and i wanted to you know get your ideas how how event planners can use features like polling and surveys and live q and a via the app uh to to increase the engagement in virtual events Ed, can you can you give us like some some uh, you know tips on that yeah i think i, I think with with polls you know traditionally when you're doing a you know face to face event setting up polls even though polls are a you know a standard feature on social media whether it's facebook or twitter you'll see that there's a lot of work needed to get it working for uh, during a real event and and what this allows you to is is really do on the fly polling so as presenters you 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 do the polls on the fly and and in many cases it need not be a single poll it can be a multi screen poll a multi question poll uh, which which ensures that you know you're also getting feedback in real time as as you are as you're collaborating so the fact that it's been tested uh, for large scale planet scale deployment and the fact that speakers can very easily without going to an event manager i mean the key the key message is that they don't need an admin or an event manager to set it up it's as easy as setting it up on on any right. social media platform and that that really helps in the rollout of these polls right and i and i feel so the you know from a virtual i mean i mean in real time events you know you have the people sitting right in front of you the speaker is right in front of you you can gauge the engagement pretty easily because they're all physically there there's kind of an obligation yeah. to be looking at the speaker or <laughs> looking at the screen yeah. or something yeah. like that you know when you're sitting but but in a virtual event to get attendees to actually participate in that yeah. session the polls can serve as an excellent medium of keeping that engagement going and making sure that yeah. attendees are participating and you know yeah. like really engaging with the event exactly and even on training events you know many of our events that we do are also as i said sales training or events in general and then polls are used as a means of uh, you know also educating as as the as the slides are rolled out so yeah i mean polls work very well with the uh, with uh, with this virtual event scenario and similarly i know said you were talking about raising hands which is mm. a tough one during virtual events mm. so live q and a uh, you know i feel could be another really uh, really good feature that enables audience to interact with the speakers and the the virtual event doesn't become a one way stream and people don't have to yeah, wait yeah. till the end of the session if they have a question they can post it and you know it will be presented mm. to the speakers whenever they're ready yeah exactly you know the upvoting is really great i mean q and a has been there for a while uh, and and what we see in the real event is that some of the attendees have the app or or some form of a link some of them don't and some of them may not be having uh, you know a proper internet access based on the wifi situation but when when it's all virtual uh, we, we really see it skyrocket we really see that if there are 100 people in a room or in a broadcast we are seeing more than 80% of them actually asking a question and the wow. fact that you would have wow. you know more than so many questions you know the upvoting really becomes key because you don't want you know a speaker cannot possibly see at 80 or 100 questions at the same time 
So the upvoting on questions really becomes uh, very good. I, I, I didn't realize that, that that's a level of engagement that, you know, people are doing on virtual events, which is why, I mean, I think for event planners, I mean, when we had that initial question about, you know, when they're deciding tools, how to go virtual, just going with a web conferencing, uh, you know, platform or a web, uh, web meeting platform, it's great to just broadcast videos and just get one way content out there. But if you really want to deliver that engagement that you were delivering and, you know, if you really want to materialize and, Get the potential of your event out you do need a comprehensive tool that will give attendees the ability to participate like they would have if they were there and in person and that's i think that'll be for these virtual events to be successful in the coming months and yeah. for event yeah. planners to get the participation from people yeah. after they've attended one event for them to make sure that they attend the next event, come back on a virtual event. Yeah, I think and, and the fact, will... yeah, and the fact is most of our customers, as you know, are not just one event. So when yeah. you need analytics, when you need the journey of one user that across yeah. the year, you know, what has that person done? How many questions has he answered? How many polls has he been part of? Then you, you, you never get that sort of thing with just a one-off web conferencing. Absolutely. So we want integrated analytics, and that's what's really key. That's absolutely a, that is absolutely a great point. And uh, you know, similarly, you know, you you have features like surveys. So you know, just to get uh, how how you can improve the virtual event experience, and you know, what more can be done. Uh, have these surveys in the app, so you get the feedback uh, from the attendees that you're looking for. You know, because, uh, I mean, everybody, this is new for everybody. You know, I mean, as an event, and attendees will understand that. You know, you planners need to know that even attendees know that, you know, this is not something that you've been doing for a long time. So so there will be glitches. There will be situations where, you know, it will be something new. So getting these feedback from attendees will be very important for you, you know, to know, like, you know, how can you make it better? What more can we give them in a virtual event? Because, I mean, the features are there. But which features do you want to enable? Which features made the most value for them to collect that feedback? I mean, this is a new world that we're all in right now. So, you know, this these features, like giving them as much engagement capabilities that you can will only help you, like Sid said, get more analytics, more data, so that if you have to do this, and from what it looks like for the foreseeable future, we might have to do a lot of things virtually. So the more data you're able to collect, the more seamless and the more, you know, value you're able to provide your attendees, the more chances that your events will be more successful and that you will be able to plan them better for the upcoming days. Now, another feature, Sid, which is a very standard feature with event apps, but again, with having a virtual event and having it through an event app makes it, from my point, pretty critical a feature is when I'm when people are attending events or anything from home, there's a tendency that they get involved in doing something else. While they're in person at an event, they know that, okay, I have to go to the session right now, I have to go to the session. But when you're at home, there's a chance that you might get up to make a cup of coffee or you might just step out in the backyard for you know, getting some fresh air in. And there might be a session. So I mean, things like push alerts to you know, send them a, the alert that the session's about to start. And then what, E21 brings, guys, again, is that directly from the push alert, as soon as they'll get it on the screen, when they click the push alert, they don't have to do anything else. The, the session stream will launch automatically because E2M brings deep linking within the app to different sessions and sections of the app. So, so you can link the broadcast directly to the push alert and ask wherever I am, I hit that push alert button on the locked screen of my phone and it launches the stream. So, you know, you get calendar notification, which is a Zoom call or whatever, then you hit that, then it takes you to the calendar, then you hit the Zoom link, and then it launches the Zoom app, where it then asks you multiple questions, whether you wanna dial in, whether you wanna use internet. So all that is gone. It's totally seamless. You send a push alert. Yeah, no, this, this is a great point, Varun, and actually this is very critical and one, one more very important difference between a one-off web conferencing and E2M live on air is that you don't expect, because these when you say an event, is actually for at least for half a day or a full day, and typically up to three days, we don't expect a person to be sitting on their desktop or laptop for the whole day. That, that's unreasonable to assume. 
So they are going to be in a session for 30 minutes, 40 minutes, or up to an hour, and then they are they are going to go and do something else. Or if they are in their home office, they are going to go for a lunch break, as you as you said. And so they need to understand that an event is going on for the whole day, and they can do what they need to do, but they can jump in at any point of time, or the app will encourage them to jump in when there is something of interest, when somebody is pinging them to have a conversation, when there's an event, when there's a session that they should be attending, or you know, if they're a speaker, then it will notify them that hey, your speaking session is coming up in 15 minutes. So, uh, you know, that engagement is kept across the whole day, and then it's it's multi-channel or omni-channel. So you have your desktop or laptop, and at the same time you have your app. So you can seamlessly crisscross, uh, you know, across the whole day. That's that's an excellent point. The the, the multi-channel, the omni-channel ability for me to watch it on my desktop, and then if I have to step out in these unfortunate situations just to pick up a box of milk or something like that, uh, between session breaks, and then I can get this push alert that a session is about to start, and I can join it on my phone, or I get back and then I can seamlessly transition from my phone to my desktop or my laptop without missing an, a minute of the session. I think that that becomes pretty critical in these times because like you said, Sid, I mean, you know, I mean, one, you can't expect people to sit on the chair all day and two, it is unhealthy. I mean, you, you just can't be sitting on a chair and looking at a screen all day. You do need to move around and the ability for you to seamlessly transition from the laptop to a mobile and back to a laptop, I think that is a, that's an excellent point. Yep, that's good. Yeah. So, so I don't know, it's a time check. Uh, yeah. We, yeah, we are you at the past. So, so you want to do a quick recap, Sid, on, you know. Yeah, uh, recap yeah. and open up for any Q&A, yeah. Yep, so so I'm going to do, like, I just want to touch one last point, and then we're going to go into recap, Sid. One, one point that, I mean, I've, I've been asked by, my customers is what else can they do to encourage these engagements during these virtual events and like you mentioned happy hour so one of the things that w my customers are doing is they're using gamification to allocate points for people to show that they're engaged with the event like when they ask questions or when they vote and then they're using these points to declare winners and they're giving them like free coupons, like, you know, like Grubhub or Uber delivery so they can get something, you know, order for themselves and things like that. So, so, so making that virtual experience, like, okay, I want to participate in this event for the happy hour, I'm going to get this or something like that. So these are not, this is another way to keep your users engaged. So, so we're going to go to recap guys. And basically the main points we covered today is the big difference in standard web conferencing and uh, app based event, virtual event, is that it's it's not just a conferencing, a virtual streaming tool, it is a full event. It's like a virtual event venue where you're giving your attendees the ability to explore the event like you would have in an actual venue. You're giving the attendees to connect with other attendees just like they would have networked at an actual event. And you're giving the attendees to engage and express themselves and engage with the speakers fully even actually slightly more than they probably would have done in, in an in-person event so so you're not losing any value adds that you had except you know i mean there's no replacement to going and giving somebody a hug or shaking somebody's hand but till that's not possible you're still able to give them the ability to do those things virtually and that's what e2m on air brings to the table so let's definitely open uh the screen for questions and i think there is a question over here from Andrew. Andrew, Sid, Andrew's asking, um, well, you already answered that. So I'll just. Yeah, just, to, just to explain, yeah, it, 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 I'll just it need you to read it out for the users and then you can uh, explain the, uh, in detail, yeah. Sid. So, so the question, guys, is do you have the ability to integrate with a live auction software tool? So, Sid, you mentioned that we are using Zapier and MuleSoft for third party integrations. Yeah. yeah. So, for that, yeah. So, so the so the 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 platform comes with a lot of pre-built integrations. So if you have any, you know, traditional event uh, system, whether it's a uh, C event or it's a Lanyan or or anything else, uh, you know, if you if it's a CRM, for example, Salesforce, all those are coming out of the box. But almost for every large customer that we work with, there is a need to pull in data or export data. So we've, we've been using Zapier and MuleSoft. They are two 
you know, different uh, essentially endpoint connectivity software. And uh, we take it as part of the professional services team to build in uh, those modules. So it appear as a different tab. Uh, but but the, the, the platform is very scalable. You know, once you get into a demo, you will see that you can literally create your own tab, your own module, uh, and, and, and extend the app to newer modules that are not part of it. So, so that's how we do that. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. So this, uh, one, one more question that's coming to me directly is, uh, how do you how do you price this? So these again these uh, you know these go by licensing. It's a SaaS model, so they, they go by licensing. Most of it is a, like an annual license, uh, so they go by licensing uh, in terms of number of users, uh, etc. So, so Sid, uh, when you're saying it goes by number of users, is it just number of users or is it also number of events or? Yeah, it's it's a combination. It's a license based on events and users that, that, you, okay. that you sign up for annually. Yeah. And, um, and uh, you know, I mean, when, when they sign up, is there, do they get all the features or, you know, is there, are there, do you have different versions available for them to choose between different price packages or? There, there is, of course, yeah. So, the, yeah. so based on based on the size, I mean, usually we, it's all the features come come there, but uh, you 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 license it based on the size of the event and the number of users. Essentially, number of events and and the users. That's the cross. You're looking okay. at those. So, there's two uh, more questions. So, uh, yeah. in the Q and A panel, said so. One is, how do you guarantee strong audio visual quality? Do people just yeah. use their own devices? This is again from Andrew. Yeah, yeah, that's that, that's correct. So they, they just use their regular Android or iPhone devices, or when they're at the desk, they just use a uh, Chrome browser, and any browser, but we recommend Chrome. So uh, uh, I think uh, one of the questions that I had, and I've had this from other customers, and I'll add on to Andrew's question: If somebody wants to use a high def camera, uh, they can connect that as a broadcaster, as a speaker, they can connect that to their webcam, and it will act the same as the same purpose. Exactly. But what we do is we do bitrate adjustment in terms of the quality. So, so for example, if the uh, if the uh, cust uh, you know if the uh, if the recipient or the audience if it does not it has a weak connection, then it automatically scales to an SD. Uh, so, so he might be transmitting in HD, but it will scale uh, the uh, the frames based on based on the quality of the internet connection. So it is a bit adaptable. Uh, system um, and uh, yeah, so it'll adapt adapt based on the internet connectivity. But they can use their own devices. Uh, if in some of the situations, if you have a uh, managed device like uh, Mobile Lion or something, then it works within those situations as well. We just need to configure the ports. But uh, if if you have a mobile device management software, then it works in that uh, environment as well. So there's another uh, question from uh, Nick, Nick Yormack. Uh, he's asking, I understand licensing annually, but what about a one-time event? I'll take that. So mm -hmm. Nick, yes, 100%. Uh, I mean, our licenses are uh, event-based as well, and we do have uh, annual licensing. So both options are available. Um, please feel free to uh, you know uh, connect with me directly. You will receive an email with my contact details and we will be reaching out to you guys so we can share all those pricing information with you um, using that. Um, and uh, I'll definitely reach out to you, but we do have single event pricing available uh, for one-time events, 100%. Um, the next question is again from Nick Sid. Uh, he's asking, are we able to experience a poll during this meeting? Nick, we're not using E2M right now. Uh, we're using uh, Zoho for this webinar uh, primarily. So, uh, but we can uh, we can share uh, you know our polling uh, with you, or or you and I can schedule like a quick uh, fifteen minute uh, post event demo uh, either later today or tomorrow, and we can uh, we can do a poll on that and show you how that works. But we will give you the there's a video as well of a live yep. polling happening, so we'll we'll share that with you. Yep. I mean, just just to give you guys an idea, I mean, like uh, E2M was recently used at the largest electronic uh, 
convention in the world. Uh, Sid, how many attendees did you guys have? We like, were looking at 300,000. Yeah. 300,000. 300, yeah, yeah. That was a really massive uh, event. 300,000 people. And it it worked seamlessly. So, yeah. 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 So, so, yeah, Nick, I'll definitely, both Andrew, you and Nick, I will definitely uh, send out emails and, you know, we can connect later and, uh, you know, uh, we can show you, we can do both video quality tests and, uh, you know, we can do polls, et cetera, and uh, you can see how that works. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, any other questions? No, I think we're good. I think those are good questions. So. Thank you everybody for uh, you know joining us today. Um, you know, please ask any questions that you might have later, and uh, we will be happy to get back to you. And uh, you know, if anybody wants a personalized demo of the actual conferencing solution, we're more than happy to set those up for you. And uh, our team will be doing those demos in the coming days. Thank you. Thanks everybody. Take care. Yeah, thanks all. Yeah, keep safe. Thanks. Keep safe. Take care. Bye. Bye. Yeah.